Hi guys, just a quickie before I start this tutorial, I just wanted to put this in at the beginning. Now when I do this tutorial, I use Kaleidoscope Kept Paints, which have got um, sand in them. But I thought a lot of people aren't going to have Kaleidoscope Paints, a lot of people might not be able to get hold of them for whatever reason. So I wanted to just try adding the sand directly to paint. So what I did was I sort of worked it out and um, did some practicing and basically I put about a quarter fine sand to any acrylic paint and you get exactly the same results so these are just done with normal acrylic paint and sand and i just wanted to show you that it it's you know there's no secret ingredient in these um and you actually can adapt it for yourself with just sand and acrylics okay so i just wanted to mention that before the tutorial started hi guys so this is just a really simple quick tutorial i'm just playing with some um kaleidoscope paints which have got a bit of sand in them and I'm going to have a go at putting sand in normal paint because it's limited with colours so I am going to try that in the future but anyway for now right I've rolled this these two pieces of literally scrap clay they're just a dirty dull brown so they're rolled out at number one at the moment so this is on a number one this I'm putting to one side this is going to be the background so I want it to a number three but I want it to crackle so I'm doing it on a number one now and I'm literally just adding some copper foil to it okay so now I'm going to put it through on a number two and then a three and um, so I'll put it on two and then I'll turn it the opposite way for three so the crackles go both ways so I think this should be more than enough so there's a two has given the crackle one way and then I'll do a number three the other way and I've got a nice crackle okay so that's the backing which I'm going to leave there now for the main bit this here I'm going to roll it onto a number three now it's a little bit bigger okay and the next thing I'm going to do is I want to texture it so I'm going to use my old faithful going to use my old faithful um, lace here this is a thick lace so it'll leave a nice thick imprint and I just want a textured effect it's not going to make much sense because it's all going to be sliced up but it just gives a nice textured effect so it doesn't have to be lace but I think you'll get an idea as I go and you'll know what you want to use okay so for me I'm very happy with that let me just lift it up and show you. Okay, so that's a really nice lace base. Now, I know I'm not going to be needing all of it, so I'm going to cut some away to save time and bother. Okay, so I'm just going to be working with this bit. In fact, not even that much. There's my... cutter I'm going to be using so I'm just keeping that as a guide okay that's more than enough now okay so now all I want to do is pretty this up with these kaleidoscope paints so I'll just get them ready okay so I've got an array of colors here they're all greens orange sort of um solar flare that's called so and there's three more here so i'm just using the lids and these and i'm just literally going to paint this up in sort of a pretty pattern so i'm just going to start adding the paint randomly no rhyme or reason just coloring in wet one
that's just sort of um, it's all going to get sliced up so there's no need to be sort of specific I just want to have um, a mixture of colors around doesn't matter if they mix at all it's just a case of trying to get them as close as you can I'm just going to take this out of the lid as long as they complement each other that's all that matters I'm trying to think what colour have I not used ah, I haven't used you a little bit more of that darker green okay so it's really random not even pretty okay so now I'm just going to let that dry and then I shall be back. Okay, it just dawned on me, I didn't show you clearly. These are kaleidoscope paints um, and they've all got sand in. Well, they all come, they tend to come in a pack of five and they'll have like complementing colours. I've actually got all the colours so I can sort of, um, as you can see in there, there's a lot of complementing colours and what they are is it's got. Um, a little bit of sand in it. Let me see if you can open one, you can see it clearly. If I can give it a squeeze, it's not going to come up. I've opened up the wrong one. I don't know if you can see, but there's very fine sand particles in there, which is what gives you a nice texture. So that's what I've used here. Okay, so like I said, they're kaleidoscope paints by Cosmic Shimmer. And all I've done here is gone for some sort of complementing ones and like I said I've just finished it and I'm just going to leave that to dry. Okay so now it's dry I'm just going to put some copper mica over the top to try and bring out the pattern because it's kind of lost at the moment isn't it. So I'm just gently going over it and then all the pattern starts to appear again. Remember, it's a grunge sort of style, so there's no um, happen to get anything perfect. Okay, so that just highlights some of the um, pattern underneath that's about it okay so with the edging I've just rolled a piece ready for the back again using the same scrap okay I'm just going to cut it from here, it's going to be easier. Now, it's not quite Bargello, but I'm just cutting slices at an angle. I'm going to take that one off. Now, I've done it already, and with previous ones, here's a previous one where I did an earring, I literally took from the top, then bottom, top, then bottom, so there was no matching pattern. But this one, I'm going to try kind of, not Bargello, because I want the copper to show in between. but kind of keeping a Bargello theme. So when I put this down, I'm just going to move it slightly one way. And I don't want them too far apart, hang on. That's better. OK, 
Okay, so I'm leaving just over, probably just over, not quite two millimetre gap, but enough so that the gold does show through, or oh, copper rather. Sorry about the dog, if you can hear it, it's not my dog, it's one out the front. I'll leave that for after just in case. So if you can see there's just enough gap that you can the, the copper will reflect and because the 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 leaf the copper leaf is been crackled there's clay in between to hold this and I'll just give it a gentle burnish and that should stay quite nicely. So he's going everywhere because I'm using the tray. I'm going to go to the top anyway, even though my cut is smaller, because then that gives me more choice in finding what I think is the prettiest part. Okay, so I'm just going to gently burnish that down. I'm not really applying any pressure, just making sure it's all gripped. Okay, and now I've done that, I can work out exactly how I want this to go. So there's my piece ready. Any at that one there, I can see. I need to separate that a bit. Just even though it's organic, you don't want anything to ruin it. So I'm just making sure I have got gaps everywhere. I haven't squashed them. Okay, so that's where it is at the moment, and I'm just going to put it onto my uh, when I've cleaned it. My handy odour soap so I'm literally literally going to place that on there and then I shall stick that in the oven and then I shall be back Actually, I'm just going to make the hole at, at the moment for the um, for the bail. I'm doing that because when I did the earrings, it's it's hard with these bits, with the slices. So I want to decide where it's going now. Uh, I've decided it's going there now. Okay. So that is literally just going to go into the oven like that, and then I shall see you on the other side. Okay, so they're out. Um, I managed to do a little pair of earrings with the little bit on the sides, just big enough to do those as well. So all I'm going to do now is put a back on these and the earrings, and all I've done is rolled out 
what was left of the scrap clay with the copper in which I think could go lovely on the back so I've rolled this out on a number three for the pendant and I'm just going to use some trusty crepe paper and put this on the back rip away the excess when I do the earrings I should do a number five as I want them to be thinner but I'll just do this one with you just to show you and then I'll do the rest off screen so first of all I'm pushing it on now I'm because I'm not using liquid clay although I advise you to use it if you're at all um, not feeling good about doing this I like to obviously it's very rugged and I like to press in the whole thing and the edges I've never yet had anything come away and I will use liquid clay when I think I need to but for something like this I think the pressure it goes into the tiny little bits and bobs and it holds so I'm just gonna cut away around the edge we've all got a way of doing things haven't we and this is how I prefer to do my backs so I'll just give it a rough cut now and then I'll go over it and press it a bit more okay I know I'm happy with it then I'm just gonna literally go at a very slight angle it just gives it a beveled edge which I think looks nice if you can see that so I'm not quite at 45 degrees but just a very slight angle I just think it gives it a nice professional finish at the back so I think the back and sides are very important in the finished piece Okay, so I'm just going to move that hair. Just going to check it's tidy all round, keeping my fingers off the actual pattern. Okay, and then I'm just going to put that back in the oven to finish it off. And I should do the same with the earrings on a number five. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so they're out of the oven and the only other thing I want to do to them is just show you them first. Um, so there it is. You can see the gold is coming through nicely. And there's the sides and the back. It's all nice and smoothed off to give it a nice finish. And the only thing I want to do now is I just want to do little flecks of gold lines on the edge. So I just want to catch them every now and again. I'm using um, a decor pen. If you haven't got one, just use a bit of gold paint or gold alcohol ink. But I'm just randomly I just want to add that little speck it makes a difference I think so I'm just seeing if there's anywhere else I want to add it I think I will add some there bit there I think that'll do and I should do the same with these okay so it just gives it that little edge I like it anyway so they're finished now I should be back when I've added findings just to show you the finished pieces Okay, so here they are finished. I've just, just stuck them on a really short bit of cord at the moment just so I can give you an idea of what it would look like on the on the chain. So it's a front, the back. Okay, so I mean that's literally just that. I'm just trying to give you an idea of how it'll look. And then the same with the earrings. I just literally stuck a couple of um crinkly um, jump rings onto the earring findings and that's them done as well so I might put the camera in and see if you can get a better view because it doesn't look like you're seeing them very well it's too much okay 
that might be better now you probably see them okay all right so really simple all done from that brown scrap i mean it's just so worth messing around with scrap especially in this climate where everything's getting so expensive okay so hope you enjoyed this tutorial and i'll see you again soon thank you